I want to show you guys how to go from looking like this to this. and today I'm going to be talking about how to dress as a pirate and giving you guys tips and tricks and just some things that I look for when I'm looking for specific pirate pieces and things to incorporate in my outfits. If you're new to this channel or you haven't seen any of my content before, um, I create a lot of content around dressing up as a pirate um, but also like cosplay and Ren Faire outfits as well. So um, I guess those are my qualifications as to why I'm making this video. But I do get asked a ton about where I get specific pieces, how I layer things together, and so that is why I wanted to make this video. So whether you're looking to dress like a pirate for Ren Fair, Halloween, a pirate themed party, or even cosplay as your OC for D&D, then this is the video for you. And if you are a fan of D&D, then this brings me to the sponsored segment of this video. Today's sponsor is World Anvil. I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, World Anvil. World Anvil is a world building, writing, and game mastering website. And while it is great for D&D players, it can also be used for so much more. They provide a space for anyone looking to organize their ideas and characters. So whether you're an author, game master, creative, or role player, World Anvil is an amazing asset for you to expand upon your stories. They have 25 world building article templates for you to choose from to inspire you with prompts and deepen your world building. They have features such as family trees and bloodlines to track and present the relationships of your characters, organization charts to visualize the inheritance of your species, organizations, or anything else you want, as well as diplomacy webs to display the relationships between nations, kingdoms, and mega corporations. It's an amazing tool for creating wiki-style presentations of your world and writing. One of their best features is Chronicles, which combine the capabilities of custom timelines and maps so that you can plot events across time and space. The outfit that I'm wearing right now is actually inspired by World Anvil. I figured it made most sense in a how to put together a pirate outfit video to actually put together a pirate outfit that was inspired by World Anvil's colors. And then I was able to use their interactive map feature on their website to put together a page that gives details about each part of the outfit. I'm gonna put the link to that page in the description of this video, so go check it out. If you'd like to try out World Anvil for yourself, they were kind enough to provide me with a discount code for 40% off all yearly subscriptions to share with you guys. So just use the code Megan, M-E-G-A-N, and I will put that in the description below as well. And back to the video. I asked you guys on Instagram what kind of questions you had and what things you wanted me to go over in this video, and I got so many different ones, but I will be trying to answer the most asked questions throughout this. Um, and most of those questions were like where I get specific pieces, uh, where to find cheaper options for things, which I will be trying to go through with kind of each piece that I have. Um, talking about shirts, pants, corsets, where to potentially thrift for things. Also, just a disclaimer, please keep in mind that this is not a how to dress like a historically accurate pirate. If you are interested in learning more about that, Nicole Rudolph has a video that I recently found called What Did Pirates Actually Wear? Fashion at Sea in the 18th Century and Our Flag Means Death Costumes, which is a great show by the way. But yeah, if you're interested in that, go check out her video. She talks about um, historically accurate pirate fashion and it's very interesting and informative. I want to start by breaking it down into specific pieces that I incorporate in a lot of my outfits and that I associate with pirate outfits in general and then I will show you guys the different ways that I style those pieces and layer them to create a pirate outfit. Like sometimes for me looking at an elaborate outfit and trying to figure out how to recreate that um, is a little bit overwhelming so you know, I, want, I gotta dumb it down for myself a little bit. So that's what we'll be doing here. If you are new to this or you don't really do cosplay much, um, hopefully this will be helpful. The items I'll be showing throughout this video are things that I've collected over the last couple years. So some of them are fairly pricey, some of them are cheap or thrifted. I've collected these things from Ren Fair, random shops, Amazon, Etsy, thrifting, and vintage shops. So kind of all over the place, just a wide variety. Also, I apologize in advance for the lack of knowledge that I may have in clothing terms or specific fabrics. I will try my best to identify 
like fabrics if I think that's you know important to the piece. Also, if you see me like glancing down or looking at my phone, I do have notes on my phone, so that is why I might be uh, referencing that. But let's start with tops. So the first shirt that I want to show you is actually the one that I am wearing currently. This is probably my favorite go-to pirate shirt. I just think that it looks very authentic, it looks very piratey. I think this is linen, so it's very lightweight and breathable, which is always nice, especially if you are going to things like Ren Faire, and that's why you're dressing up. It's a drawstring v-neck. I think that this immediately gives pirate vibes on its own because of the laces, the material, but I did buy it larger on purpose so that I could roll up the sleeves because I think that also helps to create that like puffy sleeve look that you see in a lot of pirate outfits as well as when you put a corset over it, it's gonna bloom out on the sides here and on the bottom. Whenever I'm buying shirts for Ren Faire or a pirate outfit, I do like to buy a little bit larger than what I would normally wear because I do I think that that helps with the look. This shirt I got from a shop called Native Inca Shop in Pittsburgh. Uh, I wasn't even looking for pirate shirts, but uh, I came across this and I thought that it was perfect for one of my pirate outfits. So always be on the lookout because you just never know where you could find stuff. Okay, so this next shirt is great for a pirate look. It has these puffy sleeves that I think just immediately screams pirate. Anytime you have that poofy sleeve with a cinched waist, whether it's a corset or a belt, I think that that really creates that pirate look for you. And this shirt came from my mom's costume box. We've had it for years. So it probably is either originally from Spirit Halloween or Ren Fair. I don't know exactly where she got it from, but if you look up like puffy sleeve chemise, um, you will probably find something very similar. Okay, so this next shirt I love because I don't think at first it screams pirate. It kind of just looks like a normal like dress shirt, but what drew me to this was the v-neck collar here as well as the buttoned sleeves it has this poof look as well it's more subtle but it is um, definitely a little bit pirate-esque and the buttons even have this like little iridescent effect to them which anything that sort of feels like a pearl from the ocean makes me think of pirate so that's just a very subtle detail to it but i think that things like that can really um, elevate the look you're trying to go for. The color as well I think is perfect, this off-white. The last shirt I showed was a pretty like stark white color, but I do enjoy shirts that are just a little bit off-white, similar to the one that I'm wearing, or this one, um, because I think that it tends to look a little more worn down um, than if you have like a bright white shirt. Because of the material, I like to use this shirt when I'm styling a dressier pirate look, a gentleman pirate, if you will. You know, it's giving Steed Bonnet vibes. This blouse is from a vintage shop called Point Four Vintage. So this is one of those tops that, you know, not everyone is gonna have. This is like pretty specific to me because I got it vintage. So you, you're not gonna walk into a costume shop and find this exact top. <laughs> okay, this next shirt I actually thrifted. So if you're trying to fall on a budget, you can, you can definitely do that. I gravitated towards this because of the material and the elastic in the sleeves. Again, with the poofy sleeve, this elastic here is going to give you that look. Um, I guess you could always add an elastic if you find a shirt that you like and you think that it would help to add something, or you can do something like this with rolling the sleeves. But yeah, so if you're thrifting, things to look out for. Um, this specific material, why I like it is, I, you know, I don't know if this is considered linen, but it is this like very, thin, breathable material, similar to this, but even thinner. So it's almost slightly see-through, but since it's a darker color, it doesn't really matter. You, you can't really see through it, but if you hold it up to the light, you can. I also really like the neckline of this. Once again, the V-neck, um, I think that a V-neck always kind of helps out, especially if it has the drawstrings, but this is a good example of where you don't necessarily need that. Next up, we have a top from Amazon. Amazon is not my first choice by any means. This was a last minute buy for my partner, Kyler. He needed a Ren Faire top and um, he needed one that would fit him and none of the ones that I have really do. So he got this one from Amazon and since it is his size and it's larger, I like to wear it and cuff the sleeves and throw a corset over it. And I think, you know why I like this one is very obvious. It's very similar to the shirt that I'm wearing now. It just doesn't have as much of a collar sticking out, but it has the drawstring, the V-neck, 
Um, it's larger, so the sleeves are cuffed, and it's a pretty similar material actually as well. This next one is a little different. Um, it is sleeveless, but I love this top. I think it helps me get like a different look. The material and the cut of the neck um, just feel very nautical to me. I don't know exactly why. I think part of it is because of the way that it's like stitched together. And then it feels like it has like a slight iridescent quality. Um, not much, but it's, it doesn't feel like a super flat material. It has a really nice texture and a nice color to it. So this is a good example of when you don't need a poofy sleeve to look like a pirate. You can do something like this. You can find other shirts and things and I think if you add specific pieces to it, this is gonna work for you. I got this from a costume cleanout. So a local university was giving away a lot of their own costumes and I went and so I actually got this for free and they were giving out a ton of other stuff. I got a lot of good stuff from that. So always be on the lookout for that sort of stuff because you just never know when something like that could be happening and you could snag a lot of unique cool pieces. The next shirt is a cropped chemise from Boss Wench, which is a Ren Faire vendor. It's probably the most feminine top that I'm going to show throughout this. So if you're looking for more like a feminine pirate look, um, what I would say to look out for is these ruffled sleeves and the little ribbon bow tie in the front. Next we have pants. This first pair that I want to share with you is a brown pant from a Ren Faire vendor called Pirate Bones and Booty. They do have an online shop, so if you are interested in getting a pair, I will link them down below. I love these because they're handmade and really, really well constructed in my opinion. There are three buttons in the front and laces in the back to make it adjustable. And overall, I just love the shape of these. Because of the lacing in the back, they're, you're able to cinch them in the waist. And I do like putting a corset under this, but I love it too because I don't think that you really need one if you do want to get like that little bit of a cinched in waist, kind of have the shirt like poofy over top. This is gonna give you that look without having a corset. And another little detail about these pants, at the bottom they have some lacing so you can actually cinch these in as well to give you a very, very like poofy pant look. So if you want to put a boot over it and tie these, um, that's gonna be such a cute look. This green pair is another Amazon purchase um, by my partner who needed some Ren Faire pants last minute again. I think he bought these with the blue shirt actually, but they have a tie in the waist, so they are adjustable and I am able to get them to fit me, so I'm showing them here as well. These honestly give me a little bit of more of like a Viking vibe because of how the bottom of the pant is with the lacing, but I don't mind it. I think that they still work well for a pirate look and you could always put like a boot over this to hide that. These brown corduroy pants were also an Amazon find. I wanted to show this pair because I think that at first glance, these just pretty much look like normal pants and they were sold as normal pants. These weren't like, oh, pirate pants or, you know, rent fair pants. Um, so this is probably, I feel like you could find something like this at a thrift store, but I have been able to incorporate these into a few different pirate looks and I think that they work pretty well. So I just wanted to give you an example of like something that you might even just have in your closet can sometimes work well in a pirate look um, as long as you add the right pieces with it. Next up are just a basic pair of black leggings. This is a great option, a very easy option. I don't even know where I got these because I think I've had them like literally since high school. So I think that a lot of people already have you know, a black legging in their closet. Um, this is another example of just something that you can find very easily. And if you're pairing it with the right pieces, it's gonna look good, I think. I actually like to wear what I'm wearing now on top and then just throwing the black leggings underneath. Maybe like you already have kind of the rest of your outfit built, you have other elements built, and you just need a pair of pants and you've been struggling to find something try just a pair of leggings. Next up are these black pants. These are from Ren Faire. These are just like a loose, I think, linen pant um, with some buttons in the front, very simple. And finally, I have a skirt. Um, if you can't tell, I am more of a pants type of girl when it comes to putting together pirate outfits. I just personally like that look more and I've always kind of struggled to style skirts with pirate outfits, um, maybe just because I don't have as many. But this is one of the skirts that I have from Ren Faire. It is from Boss Wench. And I wanted to show you this 
just to give you an option of like how to style a skirt in case that is more of your vibe. It's just a pretty basic um, long black skirt, but if you add some skirt hikes to it, skirt hikes are magical, magical pieces. Skirt hikes create that bustled look that you see in a lot of pirate outfits where there are skirts. So that the skirt is not just hanging flatly, you can pull up pieces of the skirt into a skirt hike. And I think it just adds so much more interest to an outfit. And you just add them onto your belt, pull the skirt through them, and voila, it's magic. Next up is corsets. I love, love, love corsets. If you watch a lot of my videos or my shorts, you probably have seen that in a lot of my outfits, I am often wearing a corset. But I understand that corsets are not for everyone. So if you are not a corset kind of person, um, that's okay, and it is definitely not necessary to get a cool pirate look. I'm just going to talk about it because it's what I use in a lot of my outfits. So for people that might be interested, um, I will go over a couple corsets very quickly. First up is probably my favorite corset. It's the one that I'm wearing. Um, it is from Saxony Leather, which is a Renaissance Fair vendor. I love the look of this one because of the lacing in the front and the way that it fits is very comfortable. So it is easy to wear for a full day, which is very nice because if you are a Ren Fair goer, you will know that uh, you need to be comfortable. It's not steel bone, so it's not as like form fitting as some of the other corsets that I will show next. And it doesn't cinch in the waist as much as like a traditional corset would. So if you don't like corsets because you feel like they're too restrictive or you feel like they're too tight, this kind of thing might be a good option for you. Or a corset belt, which are usually smaller, like they're not as like tall, I guess, which I don't have any to show you, but if you just look up corset belts, uh, you'll find plenty of options. Okay, so the next three corsets I'm gonna show you are all from True Corset. I love this Day of the Dead one because it has skulls on it and any chance I think to add like some skulls into a pirate look, I will take. And I just love the pattern on these other two. Adding a corset gives you another opportunity to just add like some personality to an outfit as well. So like with the Day of the Dead one, I think, you know, having the skulls and the pattern, I could have a pretty simple outfit, but adding this and then I'm adding just Kind of like a point of interest to the outfit. So if corsets are not your thing, whether it's just uncomfortable or you don't like the look and you aren't interested in a corset belt, you could also go for something like a sash. Here's an example of a nice vest sash combo. And these are actually reversible too, which is really nice. So you can just flip them out and get a different look, um, different colors. But as you can see, you don't really need a corset to create a nice pirate look. So the vest and sash I just showed is from Pirate Bones and Booty, which is where the brown pants are from. And those actually are meant to go together as a full outfit, but I like to take pieces and mix and match them. So I use those pants in a lot of different pirate outfits I do, and I incorporate the vest and sash in a lot of other looks as well. Let's talk pirate coats. I only have one and it is from Medieval Collectibles, which is an online store um, with tons of medieval stuff. Uh, if you're interested in getting like shirts, pants, for all this kind of stuff, they have a ton. So if you have the money and you don't really want to like deal with thrifting or buying from Amazon, check out Medieval Collectibles. They have tons of options. You could definitely build like a full pirate outfit there, but it is going to be um, probably a little bit more pricey than if you tried to thrift some pieces. So this is one of those items that is really nice to have if you have the money for it, but if not, um, totally okay and you don't absolutely need it. If you are crafty, um, you could probably make a pirate coat out of some things that you might be able to find at a thrift store or a vintage shop as well. Belts are a great layering piece to incorporate. I feel like in a lot of pirate outfits that I see, there's always belts on belts on belts. It's always stacking belts, uh, different kind of leathers, different colors, some with buckles, some with rings. Some serve a purpose and some are just there purely for aesthetics. You can always use your belts to hang things from, like little jars or cups, little bags full of doubloons. Most of the belts that I use in my pirate outfits, especially early on, were just thrifted. Um, things that I already had in my closet, to be honest. Like this one, for example, is just a Calvin Klein belt with a um, brown belt that was also thrifted layered on top of it. I like to stack them over top of my pirate coat to cinch the waist back in. And you can mix and match um, buckled belts and ring belts. Ring belts are what you see in a lot of Ren Faire outfits. These are ring belts. This brown ring belt is from Amazon and I just added some skirt hikes to it that I got at Ren Faire. This brown leather ring belt is my favorite and it is from Journeyman Leather. 
A pirate hat, a tricorn hat is a great addition to an outfit. Um, it's similar to the coat like I was talking about. It's not something that you need, but sometimes it helps to really pull the whole look together. I have three pirate hats. I got them all from Renaissance Fair. Um, you can find pirate hats on Amazon, online. I don't know if Medieval Collectibles has pirate hats, but they probably do. Um, you can get them from places like Etsy. You can get custom made hats. I like to buy hats in person just so that I can try them on and make sure I like them on my head. For me, hats are kind of iffy if I'm going to like how it looks on me, so I like to be able to try it on, um, but totally up to you. I also like to make sure it's going to fit right. I know that you can like add things into it if it's a little bit too large, but if you buy a hat that's too tight, then it's too tight. I think when you buy a hat too, considering the material is kind of important. Um, you see a lot of like felt tricorn hats that work pretty well. Um, you can add feathers into them, you can add pieces to them to make them more interesting and to make them fit you better or a character maybe that you're portraying. The first one I want to show is this cream colored felt hat from Pirate Bones and Booty. It has an antler accessory with some feathers and I just added a little dragon clip to it from Dragon Hatchery. A felt hat like this is such a great option because it is lightweight. It's something you can wear outside on a hot day and not be too uncomfortable. The next hat that I want to show is this brown leather hat from Just In Time Boots and Accessories. And this one was pretty pricey because it is full leather and it is heavy. So I did wear it once to a Renaissance fair and I will not be doing that again. <laughs> um, it was way too heavy. It was way too sweaty on my head. Um, ew. <laughs> And my head hurt by the end of the day because it was literally just like too much, too much. So it's great for like the TikToks that I make and or maybe if you had an event that was like you were going to be taking your hat on and off. I think just considering the material that you're getting is important because I didn't really think about how like heavy it was going to be when I bought it. I am glad that I bought it for sure. Do not um, regret that purchase. And finally, I have a black felt tricorn from the Enchanted Palace. It has frills around it and it used to have a feather, um, but I did travel with this hat and I just did a poor job of taking care of it. So the feather has like kind of ripped off. In this clip, you can see where the, I think, glue is. So I just need to glue some feathers on there to hide that. But I like that hat because it has something in the rim where you can bend it and kind of like shape it how you want. So if you want it to like flare out a little bit more, you can do that. Or if you want to cinch it in and have it be like pretty tight, like not the actual rim around your head, but the part that creates the actual like tricorn, you can make those adjustable. You can make like the points more pointy or you can make them more rounded depending on what vibe you want. Whereas the one from Pirate Bones and Booty doesn't have that. So it just depends like what, what kind of look you're going for, um, what's gonna fit with the outfit that you're trying to put together but those are all good things to consider when looking for a hat. An alternative to a hat, and I'm sure you've seen it a lot, is some sort of bandana or a headscarf. And I would recommend looking up inspiration pictures on like how to tie it. I personally don't wear a ton of bandanas because I have the hats or I'll just kind of style my hair how I want it to look. But I've seen people do some really cool looks with bandanas and maybe like braiding their hair or adding like a metal hair twist in it. Obviously pirates have weapons. How else would they plunder and loot? Um, so let's talk a little bit about weapons. If you are interested in getting a real sword, there are definitely alternatives out there, like getting a foam sword. This is a foam sword that I got at Renaissance Fair a couple years ago, and I've used it a lot. It really helps. Um, for me, I love it because it's very lightweight and I do transition videos, so like I can swing it around very quickly and not have to worry about um, cutting my head off on accident. <laughs> so, you know. This is a great option. If you're not looking for something like super heavy and you wanna be able to have like the blade out if you're going somewhere in public, uh, this is great. You won't have to worry about getting it piece tied, obviously, because it's foam. And if you don't know what piece tying is, basically when you go to Ren Fair, if you do have a real sword, a real dagger, or some sort of weapon, they will make sure that you have it piece tied. So basically they'll have the cover on and they'll zip tie it like to the handle so that you can't just take it out and start swinging it around, you know, because obviously you're in public and safety is important. So a cutlass is the type of sword that is normally associated with pirates. That's what this is. You could also go with some sort of like prop pistol. Um, 
that you just kind of have tucked into your belt or if you have like an actual holder for it, that's nice. I, I don't yet, I do want to get one. Um, but so I'll just kind of like tuck this into my pants or tuck it into a belt. If you do want to look more authentic and you're okay with the extra weight, getting a real cutlass um, is really nice. <laughs> I have a friend that I met last year at the Great Lakes Medieval Fair who runs a booth, he runs the pirate auction there, and he raises money for disabled veterans. I've talked about him in other videos, but he was so kind in gifting me um, some weaponry, and this was one of the weapons that he gave me. And, you know, I thought I was happy with my foam sword, but when I got this, um, I personally think it makes my outfits look a lot cooler. So, you know, this is real and this would obviously get peace tied at Ren Fair. But having something like this hang off your belt, it's gonna make you obviously look more authentic. So it just kind of depends on what vibe you're going for. So pirates love shiny things. So let's talk a little bit about jewelry. I think jewelry is very important when you're trying to come up with a nice pirate outfit and can often be overlooked or forgot about. So I think, you know, mixing metals, stacking necklaces, stacking rings, that's all gonna really help your outfit come together in my opinion. The gold necklace that I'm wearing right now is from Target and the sword necklace is from a shop in Valiant, PA called Wicked Little Witches. And it has become my favorite necklace just because I think it works in a lot of the outfits that I put together. Um, I just love it so much. And the rings are from all over. But you can just get costume jewelry, you can get cheap jewelry from thrift stores, gold hoop earrings, obviously I think are associated a lot with pirates. When it comes to picking out jewelry for a pirate look, I kind of want it to be a little bit messy, a little bit clunky. So I just have a bunch of rings on, they really don't match. You know, I have different metals on, the necklaces, same thing, I just have kind of like this layered look. And finally, let's talk about footwear. I have yet to actually buy a nice pair of like authentic looking pirate boots. Um, so my, the ones that I normally wear in my outfits are just thrifted. My mom actually bought them for me. Um, they do come up to above my knee and I, I like that look. But I think when you're looking for a pirate boot, look for lacing and look for buckles. So I think that is about it. I really hope that this was helpful. Um, if you have any recommendations for specific shops that you like to shop at, or just any sort of suggestions or recommendations that maybe I didn't touch on, please leave it in the comments below. I think that um, it'd be great to start a discussion uh, just giving out recommendations to people uh, so that it's not just me and hopefully people can get some inspiration from the comments as well. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful at all, please give it a like um, and maybe subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. This is really like my first sit down talky video that isn't a vlog style video. Um, so I would love to get into creating more content like this, more long form content. Thank you again to World Anvil for sponsoring this video. I was so excited when they reached out, so definitely go show them some love. All right, I think that's it. I hope I didn't forget to say anything, but I'm sure when I'm editing this, I will have forgotten to say something. Oh man. Oh my God, it's been filming for an hour.